Hi, welcome back everyone. My name is Mbra Oliver and today I'm going to show you how you can easily make a REST API for your next application. We will use Laravel as backend to build the API. So for start, we need to generate a new Laravel project. And if you don't know how to generate Laravel project, I recommend you to go to make some turn on YouTube and follow some Laravel tutorial before coming here. If you already know Laravel, we can start. First thing you need to do, you need to generate a new project using Composer. So let's generate a new project. I will copy this and let's say I want to create a new project and the project name will be REST API. And now let's click on enter and wait the installation done. And now he say that he don't know Composer because I just installed Composer and I have not restart my computer. I come later. Okay, I restarted my computer and now we can create a new project. And after create, after write the project name, you need to type on enter and wait the installation done. But before the installation done, if you are new on the channel, please go to make a turn and subscribe to our channel to not miss our new video. So let's wait the installation to end. And 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 on attack and installation finish for continue tutorial. Now that the installation is done, first thing to do is to open the project in VS Code. And let's navigate to the project first. Is REST API and let's open it in VS Code. Okay, now that the project is open, let's start the project by running php artisan save to start with a development server. And you say that the server is running on this URL and we can go on this URL on the browser and we fall on this page, but we will not use the the graphic part because we will build an API, we need to have some client to consume our API. And for simulate a client, I recommend you to download some one software called Insomnia. We can use Insomnia to test our API. So you can go to insomnia.rest and on the bottom of the page, you can you will find a new link. And the link is download. You can click on download to choose your platform and download Insomnia. Sorry, let me split my screen and let me start Insomnia. Okay, now that Insomnia starts, the appearance is something like this you can organize, but we will discuss about it later. Let's just start our main task is to make to start our REST API. And when we work on the API, if you are someone who already know the basic of Laravel, we have one route folder that we use when we want to navigate between our application route. But when we are building some API, we will need to go to API field instead of web field. So let's go to API field and here we need to create a new route for, we need to define some route to make our REST API. So the Objective is to permit the user to create an account, to log into his account, and to display the account information on his profile. So we need to define some roles. We need to define three roles: one for register the user, one for logging the user, and one for display the user, the logged user. Okay. So the first role will be the, the register route, and the register route will be route. And let's say we 
use get and the endpoint will be register and we will use some controller here we need to define some controller we need to create a new controller and let's go to our console and generate a new controller and let's see we have to have php artisan make and rename it controller we need to store our controller in some api field and we want to call it both controller because we will need we will use this for this file for manage our all authentication and let's close here with some bracket and let's remove it for now and let's create a controller and it says now that controller could be successfully and if we go to app http controller we will find the folder a folder named api and inside the api folder we will get the controller that we created okay now let's pass the thing that we did and call this controller here let's see here it will be both controller the class and the method will be register and let's say this and let's put let me import this controller here And it use up http now let's check the structure is up http and inside http we have in our folder that we call controllers and inside this controller we have some api folder and inside this folder we have the auth controller and i have some Format. Uh, um, let's see. This. And hey, let's see. We want, I want to wait some to install some snippet for fast command. Let's say Laravel snippet with Laravel blade snippet. And let's say Laravel. We want to have some import or to import. And let's see show. And why this make it in red? An expected identifier route. I don't know, maybe some wrong error. But if I think that this is good, and now let's go to the old controller and create a new function that name is register. And let's see if this function will just return hello.
Now let's test our API. Now let's come back to Insomnia and click on send after writing this request. We have in response we get hello because here when we see that when we call this route API slash register and mm, I forget to tell you that the API is automatically automatically add because we use the API route is for this reason that we have this API here before the route name. So when we call API slash the route name, we call the auth controller and we call the function called register. And inside this register function, we choose return arrow. It's, it's for this reason that in our S console we have a response that name is arrow. If in my con, if here we return something else, it says here is something else. On Insomnia, if we send the request to the API, we'll get a response called something else. And it's just the thing that we return here that we get in Insomnia. Okay, now that you understand this, let's continue. And we need to make now to make some some logic to register our user. First thing to do, let's import the request because we need to make some requests. And let's say we will rename this request instance in a new variable that we will call request. You can give it the name that you want, but I prefer you to leave request. It's more simple to understand. Since here, let's say that we have some validation. We have some validation and we will validation in a function that we call validation and here call the validator and come from unit support facade and let's say so you want to make some validation and get all the entry that the user sent all entry that come for the front end of the application you want we want to communicate with our back end and we, may, we want we will make some verification. We want to check first if a name is required. If the user give a name, if not, we return some error. And same same thing for let's say we have some fail for user to send an email because when, when we make verification, we need user to send username, email, and password. So the email is unique. And it will be the table users, and let's say the man from character of this one. And the last one, it will be the password. We want to permit the user to send some password. And the password will be required, and let's say for minimum, we want to have four character. Okay. Now we want we need to make some different count to check if the validation is success or failed. Now the first the first case let us check if the validation fails. And define some errors that will be sent to our front end. And the error will be equal to the all the error that we get from the validation. Here we call the errors. And Let's just make a re let's just return some response and let's send response as JSON format and let's say that we want to have some errors. The error that we want to send is equal to the variable errors that we defined here. And let's say you want to get to send some status to status will be four hundred one. Let's see. Let's see this. And here we did. We say that the client that we want to connect to the consumer web backend need to send you some name, some email, and some password. If you don't send email, name, or password, we will return this response that contains some error. So let's come back to Insomnia and make some tests. We don't send anything, and if here we click on send. We have some error that are returned because we haven't provided some data. We haven't provided some name, some email, and some password. And before continuing, let's go back to the API and 
group route register will be called bus request syndicate request so you need to change here to pass from get post and in on insomnia you click on the method here and you change to post and if you click on send it will be the same because we haven't provided some data we have the error name field is required may be required and the status is this one okay let's go for the second case if a user provides all of the information that we, we ask and for we'll make this one we made them validation and we will call the pass method of our laravel to check to who says that the validation are correct uh, we are having some error and if the validation are correct we need to create some new users and the, the new users will be saved in the variable that we call users and we want to create these users using a request and here the new name of the users will be a request the name that come from the client of the application that want to consume our bike end I have some name we have the email we have a password so let's check it here here is the password here is the email and here is not request name it's a request email and for a password we need to hash the password we will call the hash password and let's say it's human click and we will hash the password that comes from the, our from our client and let's not forget to make this and here it says that it don't recognize user because we have an import user and user is some model uh, user let's come back on top use app and use app user App model user because the users model that we use okay now when we are on we rest api or connect our user we need to change to send some json web token to the front end and uh, the back the, the front end need to change to send some json web token and we need to generate this g weighted with this token when the user is logging and let's say so we have made some comment and it will create a token we there are so many different manners to create a token but I, I proceed like this i have some variable that i call token and we meet the function it will create token inside here we can make the token out of this like all tokens string to write a random character to make it and you can make how you want but this i will leave out to explain this here we will call the plain text token maybe your vs john is correct but maybe your vs code doesn't recognize it it's not in some error and if all of this is on let's just make a return we need to return some response and it's on two and let's see if we have a status So on red and we can send the token in the in the response to permit the user to be automatically logged when uh, the account is created. So let's say it's let's make some turn. Here we make some validation to check if all information that <coughs> we are waiting are coming from the client if the information are not coming we are here so we display with errors and we send to the front end all errors that we get 
and if we get to name the email and the password we create a new user with a name it will be the name will be the name that come from the request and same thing for the email and the password we ask the password that the client sent to us and after this we generate a new token that the user will use for log to his icon and when all of this is done we return the status of 200 to say that all is done perfectly and we send all we send the token to the front end too and for all thing all of these things work we need to to run some migration and before running some migration you need to go to your env file and make some configuration in the env file with db database we need to pro you need to provide a new database name for my case i refer a res api it will be the name that i will give in the database thing to do is to start to go to SAMP or WAMP. I don't know what you will use. In my case, it's SAMP. You need to open SAMP and go to PHP my admin to create this new database. And let me start all of it too. Yes, you can go. Okay. And where is SAMP? Come here. Let's say we go to admin and open php my admin uh, if your computer is faster every page will be upper in my case is a little is little slow so it takes time okay when you are on php my admin you need to click on generate a new database and the name of the database will need to match the new that you had on your in your env file if it's not the same it will not work so if it's same now let's click on create okay when created, you can come back to your Laravel application, and here is this You can just write PHP artisan to migrate all migration that exists in the in the database folder migration. We will need to, we will run all of this migration. So here, after some while, it is at migration done, not done, done. And if you refresh here, we will get the table. And we have REST API. If we click on this data table, we have this migration, the users table, the migration table, and personal access token. OK. Now let's close this. We don't need it. We don't need this one, too. They just open the users to wait. Okay, now let me close this one. Now that we write all of the logic that you are waiting for, register a new user. Let's go to test this on Insomnia. On Insomnia, if you want to send some requests to this endpoint, we need to come on the body here and click on the body part and choose the format that you want to send our data. In my case, I recommend you to choose JSON and you need to open the bracket and write with team that are waiting, that the backend are waiting. And the name will be here, it will be John Doe. Give it my name, my user. And Wait, let's see if the email will be. This one is email and the password. We want to three, four, five, six. six. Here, why do you give me this error? I don't know. Okay, let's see. Bracket. Here you want to have two bracket two. Okay, this is done. And now if we click on send, we have some time and here we have a status to Android and the token that are generated. Why? Because here we are in this case, we have a user that the user have sent with email, the name and the password. So we are in this case, we have generated new user 
and when we use this user that generated, we return the status and the token. And we check it and re by return the users that have been created to. And here, let's say we don't change anything and let's click on send. We have this error because we on our validation here we have said that the email need to be unique and one piece one person need to have the email. And for this reason that we have this error, the email has already been taken. So let's give here the one and click now on send. And it says that the statue is 200. We give us the token and now it will give us the user that have been created. And if we go on PHMA admin and we we'll refresh the page, we will get the users that have been created, the two different users. And this is all for the registration part. So here let's add some comments. It's registration. Okay. The next part to working on it is the login page. So the login part is the same thing that the registration part, but it's something very easy. It's just to define some route, some function, because here, and the function name needs to be login, and it will use the request that come from the client. And here we need to make just some verification with the condition that Laravel offered to us. We need to check if Permission that are come from the client are correct with one of the row that exit in the data table in the database. So we will use some filter which to make the condition of the email and of the password. And this this means that we need to check if the email that are come from the front end match some email on the back end, and if the password that come from the front end match the email first and match the password after and if this is done we just need to to return some response here we are in the case that it don't they don't match so we need to, uh, to return some error so let's say the uh, response json and we're going to make status and let's see. And let's see. Some message will be the not found. Okay, here we are. User not found. This means that the user that doesn't exist on our database. So now let's continue. If users are Where we will be equal to with that come from the front end. We get the first all file method. We get the first the first line that we get. Okay, now let's generate a new token to send it to the to, to Client to permit it to log into its token because we for this token it, it can it can log out and here we are we choose to call the same method the same create token and give it the same variable that you put it here and the plain text okay we need to add the same exactly the same thing that you got on the registry here this need to be the same thing okay now return you need just to return all this just need to return the same thing just maybe 200 the token will be this token that we generated and instead of redirect the user we don't give the user, we permit the user to log in. And let's say that we want to send a cookie, JSON web token, to store it in the, in the front end and it will eat the JSON web token. Okay. 
then here we check if the information that the user sent are not correct uh, or are not exist in our database we just return this response with this error and in our case if it exists we to verify again and we send some response to the front to the front end if it touches and the token and we store with just a web token or a front end storage and now on API we need to add a new route to in and the route will be logged in and here it will be logged in and save this one and on insomnia you can double click on double click on here and give a name and the name it will be register a user and we need to take the same thing let's create a new one and let's rename it and log in a user and let's take let's this one because we don't let we want to have this one and for the login we don't need the name we need just the email and let's take take the endpoint here and change the endpoint here at login and here instead of get we need to if we click on send we send this information to the back end and in return we get the status and the token because here not not here because here we see that if the information are correct we return the status and the token and if they are not correct we return this so let's come back to insomnia and add an average value to the password to make it false and this is that this is 401 and see the user is not found this such is 200 and the token are coming okay now the next the last thing that we need to make for a basic rest api route is to make some is to display the connected user so here in this case it just says that we present a middle way out and you can just go to this endpoints to get the connected user information okay so let's test this and let's say the name will be connected user now let's call it let's take the same thing here is the same endpoint and here it says that the endpoint is user and they say that we call it a get method already done okay so get method endpoint correct and now let's click on send when we click on send we have this error it says that route log in not defined why is it something like this because here on this route we have some middleware this middleware is off and it used something to check if your users are logging or not and something need to get some token before make this verification if you don't send some token to this route you will every day every day every day every day fall on this error route login not defined so now let's come back to the login when we log the user not to remember you we get some token let's copy this token and as i say this because you use the middleware or something you waiting an authorization that contains the token also for this route we need to send this authorization and how we send the authorization we need to put the authorization into the header so we need to go to header and here just you get authorization and for the authorization you you cannot just pass the value and you click on send let's check if you just pass the value and click on send you will always every day get the same error road login not defined no it's not like this that it works because you send some information it's waiting some the token but 
before getting a token, you need to say you need to say that we have a bureau first. After the bureau, we have a token. So this bureau and after this this bureau, we have a token. And I don't think this need it is this one. So we have a bureau here, and after the bureau, we are just some like, one space here, and after this space, we have a token now. So now let's let's test this and check what it gives to us. And now it gives you the connected user. Why I uh, think that you understand when we are on this route with this middleware, awaiting some token, but we can't send the token directly, we need to send it to the header of the front end application, the authorization part, and for send it, the authorization will be equal to the bureau, and you give you give it one space, space with the and after this send our request to the back and it will provide it will give us the information that we are waiting for. Okay, I hope you understand all of this and let's meet in one week or two weeks to react back to show you how you can consume this REST API for make an authentication using JSON Web Token and React Contest API for a React application. Hope you like this tutorial and if you learn something new, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and share the video with your friend. Okay, bye. See you later.